Hello guys, hope all of you are doing great. This is Dr. RCB and you are viewing my channel Computer Science with Dr. RCB. So I'm going to create a playlist here uh, and this is going to be the first part of the playlist where I'll be showing you how you can create a web-based application using PHP, MySQL, JavaScript, CSS and HTML. So you're going to learn all these different concepts. If you if you do not have even any prior knowledge of all these things, then also you can go through this playlist and you will certainly get some idea. And at the end, you will learn all these different things. Okay, you will learn how to use them to make an application. Okay, so this is this is going to be as I said, no, this is going to be the first part of the video. So in this part, what we're going to do is I'm going to tell you uh, what application it is that we're going to make or we're going to build. And let me tell you frankly here, I'm not going to build an app, entire application. So rather, what am I going to do is I'm going to show you how to build a specific part of the application. Okay. So that way, what we will do, see here, why am I not going to build an entire application? Because certainly this, um, uh, you know, building an entire application in a, in a tutorial video is certainly not, you know, that um, possible actually, because an entire application might involve the development of hundreds of different pages. Okay. So hundreds of different pages building uh, in a tutorial video. I mean, no, it's it's really very time consuming actually. Okay. So for that reason, what I can do is that I'll show you how to develop a specific page or how to, you know, uh, based on a specific requirement. And if you know that thing, then the same concept you can actually use to build all the rest of those I know whatever the page is, how many pages you need, no, the same concept will be used. So basically, if you know how to develop one page, then you know more or less like how to develop the entire application. Certainly, there are some other details there, but then also, as I said, no, more or less, you'll be knowing how to develop the entire application. So for example, talk about, uh, you know, like uh, talk about the application from where I am showing you this particular page. Okay, so this is an application developed by my software firm. Uh, virus software and um, I know this is actually this application is about managing the details of students uh, for a specific uh, or, or for for an university or maybe a college or or you can use it for any uh, teaching institute okay so uh, from there I'm like just consider an application like student management system so there certainly if you if you go through the requirement like what are the different uh, features such an application should support you'll realize that okay there are like you know tens of different features and some of them will be used by the students some of them will be used by the admins some of them will be used by the faculty members and like that so certainly covering the entire application is not possible so from that application now uh, like uh, i'll be talking about one specific operation that can be done uh, that uh, you know uh, which uh, the admin will actually perform that specific operation. So this is actually part of the admin that I'm showing you and uh, you can see here admin operation. So these are each circle here. You can think of like, you know, they represent a different admin operation. That is, if you click on any one of this circle, it will lead you to a specific page, uh, you know, with proper user interface and all these things uh, from where that admin will be able to uh, you know, perform that specific operation. Things are clear up to this point. Okay, then. So in this series of video, what am I going to do? Which applic or which part I'm going to, or which specific admin operation that I'm going to tell you is uh, these edit program details. Now just think of the application, overall application, student management system. So if you go through the requirement like mentally, even like without even asking anyone, what are the different features should be there? So one of the feature that uh, you will agree that the student management system should have from admin point of view is uh you know the admin should be able to edit the details of the programs offered by that particular institute maybe the university or whatever it is so that specific feature we are going to learn uh, we are going to develop in this series of video so in this series of videos we are actually going to develop these specific page now let's let me tell you some details about this specific page or what are the features that we want here in this in this in this specific page okay so as soon as the as you can see as soon as i load this page so we'll be seeing only this page okay we'll not like we will not develop uh, this admin operation page or nothing like that okay that is uh, we'll be dev we'll be developing only one page and that page is this page okay so as soon as the page is loaded something like this as soon as the page is loaded what we want is 
we want uh, that page to show us all the existing programs which are there in the database okay like say for example right now there are like uh, 76 programs there in the database so all these 76 programs are listed here okay and then along with that we want a specific button there like you know that allows the admin to add a new program in the data uh, in the system okay so for example i click here a pop-up window appears and there the admin should be able to type the name of the new program say just for the sake of an example let let me type say it's a new program it's a new program and the code uh, say for example np and the department as soon as i click here you can see a list of all the existing departments i uh, know appear here i'll show you how to do this actually and all these departments are coming from the database okay so for example the department is mechanical engineering a number of semesters just write some number graduation level again a drop down menu from here you can select anything the admin will be able to select anything and technical level admin will select something uh, you know specific value there and then at the end the admin will click on this add submit button it will show some message and done now you can see here that new program should be listed uh somewhere now you have to do a search like i'm doing it new program and see here this is the new program i just have added into the system okay along with this add new program feature what i want is say uh, admin wants to do some modification in the existing details of a specific program so for that reason you see against each against the details of each program uh, i'm showing here a button that if you click if the user clicks on that specific button then what happens is uh, more or less the same pop-up window appears but only difference here is that these details are already filled up see suppose for example if i click on this edit button corresponding to four years integrated bsc b8 major mathematics so you can see that this details are already filled up all the details are already filled up whatever it is there they are already filled up okay so like say technical details is not specified none is coming here it means it is not specified suppose the admin now wants to specify the technical details and i select say for example mtech and then i scroll down and the rest of the things are fine say i click on submit as soon as i do that you can see um, here this mtech is coming so that way what this edit button is allowing the user to do is like editing the uh, you know the the uh, details of a specific program got it there could be another button here like deleting the program from the database obviously that is also possible most probably when we do when we develop this page from scratch i might include that particular button also there but uh, you know more or less that's that's this is the page that we're going to develop in this series of video things are clear i hope so okay then since we talked about now what we're going to build now let's talk about what are the softwares that we need to install in our computer uh, so that we can build a page like this uh, no? uh, that is how we can make our computer ready for development okay so for that you need to install uh, you know two specific programs there or two uh, you know two softwares there in your computer uh, most probably you, you might already have those softwares but if they're not there let me tell you what are those softwares okay so the first software that you need to have is uh, something called as Visual Studio Code. Okay, so if you do not have that software already installed in a computer, then you install it. You just do a Google search and type there Visual Studio Code and you know, do a search. The first link will work always, I guess. And from there, you just click on the download button and download the exe and then install the uh, you know exe. Now see this is quite a straightforward approach so obviously i'll not you know i'll not you know like show you how to install and all these things these are quite easy things straightforward thing i have installed visual studio quite a lot many numbers of time on different computers and then i never found any problem there actually it is just a matter of in downloading and installing so if people also do the same thing if it is not already installed in a computer but if it is installed then you don't need to worry about this thing okay done now, why we need this Visual Studio Code Editor? Just, uh, you know, we'll be using, as the name itself indicates, we'll be using it as a code editor. It is like, you know, we, we could have used Notepad, but, you know, but this particular specific uh, code editor has a lots of, you know, it, it is a sophisticated code editor, actually. You'll, 
you will you'll enjoy typing code in this code editor and not only that you can use the same code editor for different programming languages like say uh, for C programming, C++ programming, if, if you want assembly level coding like 8086 programming, then also you can use the same code editor. Now it's only the code editor, it allows you to edit your code. Okay, it's not, uh, you know, it is not connected with any specific compiler or interpreter or anything. It's just the code editor. Things are clear? Done? Okay. So the next piece of software that you might you have to install actually in a computer and which is very crucial okay you do not have like you can you can work without installing visual studio code as i said no you can use a notepad but this piece of software is damn important if you want to develop a uh, web-based application using php mysql and all this stuff okay so that piece of software is the jamp server you just do a search in google jamp server uh, download and this link should appear and if you click on this link again you will get some uh, you will get a paste from where you can download the exe and again installing it like quite straightforward you just have to install the exe uh, and um, uh, it is as easy as installing the visual studio code editor okay just download install that's all if you find any problem you let me know it in the comment section i'll try to you know i'll i, I might help you in that case okay but as far as I know, or from my experience, I can tell you that you're not going to face any problem. It's just a matter of one or two minutes, it will be installed, done. Okay, once those two pieces of software are installed, then how you can verify them? You just go to this uh, search bar and there you type Visual Studio Code. And you should be seeing this particular app installed. If you open it, you should see an editor that looks more or less like this. Okay, done. And what about the jam server do the same thing you just do a search uh, in your search bar like jam and this app should appear and if you click on this app you should get a window that looks like a window that looks more or less like this okay and by default these two servers now these these two are important apache and mysql server okay these these are actually two softwares that makes your computer that that installs two server software softwares in your computer i'll be coming to that point in a moment but now what is the first thing that you have to do is you have to click on this start button for this apache server and this mysql server you have to click on this uh, start button now everything is ready if you have done up to this point and your computer is ready for development then you can move further but before actually moving further let me tell you the importance of these two uh, you know these two pieces of softwares that I uh, which uh, which got installed when we installed this jam server let me show you this picture now uh, as soon as you install that jam control uh, jam server these apache and mysql server, uh, it, they are they got installed in your computer now let's assume uh, let's say this is your computer okay this this rectangle is a computer and so this apache is actually a web server okay so if you install apache it means that in your computer a web server is already web server is installed and when you install mysql in a computer you can think of okay a database server is installed in a computer so apache is a web server mysql is database server to install these two pieces of software we had to install this gem you know as it, the entire package gem okay Done. So if these two are there, it means you have a web server in your computer, you have a database server in your computer. Okay. Now, what is the importance of this web server? A web server allows your computer to behave like a, uh, you know, it allows your computer to receive, uh, you know, uh, it allows your computer actually to uh, receive requests over HTTP protocol and what are those requests basically those requests are for some specific pages maintained by that particular web server and those requests um, can come over the internet uh, from different client machines you know what i mean by that is that say for example you can use a mobile phone you can use a laptop you can use a desktop from there you can use a browser and in that browser you can type the you know the address of the web server along with the page that you want and you can press enter okay as soon as you do that basically an http request is sent to the computer specified there in the browser and when the browser receives those requests so what it does is actually it executes that specific page that you mentioned in the browser and whatever it is the output of that page that program a page is nothing but you can think it of loosely speaking you can think it of as a program 
So that program got, uh, gets executed and whatever it is the output of that program, it is returned back to the client's browser. Now see, uh, let me show you this example. Say for example, what I mean by this is say, uh, I'm typing here, I know localhost colon 8000. Basically it is the name of the computer. Since I'm using it from the same computer, that's why it is localhost colon 8000. But if you, if you suppose, uh, you know, like, my web server is there in a specific computer. In that case, I have to write there here the IP address of that computer and the rest of the things will remain same. Okay. So in that computer, there is this folder PHP CRUDSX inside that dashboard, inside that add program. So that specific program I want to, uh, for that specific program, my browser is sending a request to the web server. So as soon as the web server receives that uh, request, so it will go to that specific folder and it will see if there is a program called edit program details or not. If that program is there, then it will execute that program and it will return the response uh, in the form of an HTML file to the browser. Okay. Now see, while doing so, it might it might happen that actually that that server side program has to actually connect with the database to get some more details so for example in this specific case it has to actually connect with the database and get the you know get all the programs which are already there in the database so for that reason we need this database server here we will be storing our data permanently and from this php program here because we are using php as the server side scripting language from this php program we will be connecting with the database and if needed and whatever the data we receive from here those data again will be sent back to these client machines i just tried to give you a very simple explanation of this entire thing um, i guess things are clear now uh, so even if they're not clear when you finish building this entire base you will come to know like the importance of all these different uh, you know these different servers like web server database server and you know what i mean by php program and what i mean by storing data permanently in these database tables all these things will be clear very much okay okay guys then that much only in this part of the video since we have installed all the things in the next part of the video we'll get uh, we'll go one step down and uh, we'll do some more concrete work till then have a nice day